It's like, it's, you got to realize it's a miracle with the stuff that I put online. <laughs> I know some of you are probably wondering, where do you get all these ideas from, right? Well, trust me, it is, you're like probably wondering, man, Pastor Kim, is that a limitless piggy bank? Well, I'm like you. I get scared every time. I'm like, I'm fresh out of ideas. <laughs> I don't know what. But you know who's the one who gives me the ideas? And then it's through the Holy Spirit that moves within the hearts that the preacher is able to preach what God can reveal. Your prayer spoke to me tonight. And I, want, and I believe this is what the Lord laid upon my heart. Shall we turn to Acts chapter 2, please? Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. There is a chick track that Jack Chick wrote, and it became a very famous Chick track. It was one of his first ones. So some of you may have thought that this was your life, may have been his first track, but that's not really the case. It might say number one at the back page, but that's not his very first track. One of, the, one of his first tracks is this topic, Why No Revival? What is really telling when you look at that chick track, uh, make sure that the lighting is bright enough too. Sometimes the lighting can be dark uh, for the camera. So in his chick track, Why No Revival, what was very telling to me is that when you read that chick track, it went through all the pages of typical everyday Americans. You know, People looking that, at their watches while the preacher is talking, <laughs> snoring away, playing their video game, yeah. counting dots at the ceiling. Other people, uh, there's a family who's watching the TV in front of their screen and then the Bible's like right in front of them at the living room table. Come on, wow. brother. And then in Why No Revival, Jack Chick drew pictures in which the U.S. government was going around houses, taking up Bibles and throwing them in the uh, dumpster trucks. And then little children were saying, Mommy, why did they take our Bibles? And then the mother said, because the government passed a law, honey, that we can't read Bibles anymore. And then you saw another Christian at the background over there crying with his hands over his face saying, why didn't I memorize his book as much as I should have? Amen. Amen. And then there was another page in which the officer went inside this Christian home and then one of the Christian family's neighbor told his kid or told her kid, now honey, tell the nice officer, nice officer, what you heard from little Jimmy next door. Wow. And then the neighbor's child said, Jimmy said his mom and dad were Christians. And then Jimmy was hugging mom and dad saying, Mom, dad, but he promised he wouldn't tell. And then mom and dad hugged. Jimmy said, it's okay, son, we understand. And then mother looked up to heaven and said, why is this happening to us? Wow. And then the next page showed scenes of Christians in a concentration camp. Now this is Jack Chick drawing like in the er early years. <coughs> And then the soldiers cussing them out, forcing them to do for, uh, labor. And then the Christians looked up to heaven and they said, why isn't there revival? And then Jack Chick, you know what he did in the next page? When he showed the apostasy in America of people not reading the Bible and going to theme parks rather than churches, watching movies rather than bowing their knees in prayer, and Christians who are afraid to tell their lost loved ones and family member and neighbor about salvation, he said, Jack Chick wrote in the track, this is how you can have revival. And then the next page, it showed people on their knees praying with other Christians and believers, repenting of their sin and praying for revival. You know how you get revival? That is when the power of God, revival comes from God, right? Yeah, 
That is from God's Holy Spirit where he has the power. And with all this power, you want it to come down on you, don't you? If you want this to come down, he wants you to go up. He wants you to go out to him first and see, Lord, I really want your power. Well, if you want your power, you got to reach me up here. The power of prayer. Shall we start with Acts, please? We're going to look at chapter 1 and verse 13, please. Acts chapter 1 and verse 13. Why no revival? As, Christi as Christianity started with this first church, revival broke out powerfully. That thousands were getting saved and right with God, baptized, and then just serving the Lord with passion and power. Acts chapter 1, verse 13, And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas Bartholomew, and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Lodes, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in what? Prayers. Prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. You know what you got tonight? That. That is what you got tonight is that everyone praying with one accord at verse 13 to 14 you notice that it was at an upper room that's pretty interesting so that's why some churches what you're going to notice is that they'll have some sort of upper room and they'll call that a prayer room and then they'll have the one room where the women can pray at the upper room and then the men can pray at the upper room and at Dr. Rutman's church I remember that they will always have those upper rooms and I'll, I'll never forget those days, those moments where I would go upstairs at that upper room and then in that dark, and then Dr. Upman's chalk talks were actually all around the wall, which was pretty neat. But you know what those chalk talks were? A man praying on his knees. And right underneath the prayer room, you know what it was? Right underneath the prayer room was the pastor's office. So they know if you've been praying. Yeah. I remember those times that I would pray and I would pound the floor, you know. And I was like, I don't care if Pastor Donovan's sermon is getting interrupted <laughs> right now. Lord, I need you, Jesus Christ. And I'd pound the floor. I remember those times where I would pray one hour and 15 minutes up there. It's just a blessed thing. And then not only that, everybody would be praying out loud. And then I'd be praying out loud, this other brother would pray out loud, and the other brother would pray out loud, and we'd all do it with one accord all together. Wow. Prayer. The power of prayer. And notice that verse 2, uh, verse 1, is important actually. So chapter 2, verse 1. So, if you want revival, number 1, it starts with prayer. Acts chapter 1, verse 13. That's why I strongly believe, and I want to maintain that tradition, but we couldn't do our all-night prayer meeting like we did before. So that's why I wanted to at least bring it tonight, a one-hour prayer meeting. You might say, why at least one hour? Because Jesus made that a minimal requirement. Could you not at Pray for me at least for an hour. So I at least wanted to do that so you can meet with us. But the first thing is prayer. The second thing is chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with what? One accord in where? One place. One place. You know what we need? Amen. The blowout is not the same, you might say, if, let's say, your pastor wasn't there, right? Would that make a big difference? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. One person makes a big difference. One person missing would make a big difference to kill a huge amount of the spiritual atmosphere. Amen. 
But likewise, it's the same that the blowout is not the same without a brother Robert. Amen. Without a brother Sean. Amen. Without a brother Max. Amen. Without even brother Jonathan and Stephen. Amen. Visitor or regular member. Amen. It's not the same. It's not the same without the people coming from Malaysia, Can Canada, yeah, New right. York. Thank and the Randall family, it's just so funny, the timing of it, right? How yeah. they ended up in our church yeah. and right close to the blowout. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. And now, think about it. If that family did not come, perhaps Pastor Andrews' church wow. would not that. have been able to come. Yeah. So think about the importance of one person missing. So, why no revival? You refuse to be together with the other person, one accord. So, what do we need? We need you to come. You, we need your attendance. Basically, we band together. What did, uh, what did the Bible call it at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25? Uh, forsaking the assembling of ourselves, right? The gathering of ourselves, right? So notice right here that it has to do with assembling together, gathering together. See, what does that mean? That means more, not just one person. That means everyone right. coming together. Amen. Look at Hebrews chapter, uh, keep your hand in Acts chapter 2 and go to Hebrews 10.25. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. Do you want a great blowout this week? Yes, then I want you to apply these things to tonight and go home and be able to bring it to glorify the Lord. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. You notice that why there's no revival is because there's not a, a band together. If it's just one, it doesn't look like revival. But if you have three people around you who get pumped up about, man, it wasn't street preaching fun, soul winning was fun, what happens to that one person who's the odd person? The odd person will get pumped up too. Yeah. Amen. Right? What's going to happen? You'll get a brother Jared who'll pass out more tracks than you. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen if you come in one accord and the visitor would just be as pumped as much as you. You think that brother Robert's loud, huh? With his amens and all that? You should have saw him at summer camp. You know, uh, everybody was the one shouting. Robert was totally new to that. He was the odd one. Now what happened? He shouts louder than all of us put together. Amen. What's my point here? My point is the assembling will bring power yes. to a sour spirit yes. that comes to a blowout, a divisive, proud spirit that comes to the blowout. And when all these people assemble together, even a heart like that can be drowned out yes. and overwhelmed wow. by the power of God. You ever tried that before? You know, you, you, uh, you came to a Sunday service where, you know, you're tired, worn out, and a little bitter. But what happened when the brethren were around you? Yeah. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! You're all happy smileys after that. <laughs> yeah. Why? That's the power of the brethren together. Yeah. Right. I remember one time, you think that Chuck's the cheerleader. You know, Chuck's the one that motivates everyone in the room. But there was a day he came very grouchy. He was grouchy. I said, hey, brother, how are you doing? He's like, oh, I can't talk right now. And I knew what that meant. I was like, oh, he's got those moments. So then I avoided him. And then uh, he sat next to Brother Sean. And Brother Sean, he just looked at Chuck and you know and he said, I don't know if he remembers, but I remember. Pastor remembers those significant moments, that's why. <laughs> Sean said, we love you, brother. Chuck was torn in half after that. And he was like, <laughs> oh. I was like, oh my God. It was like, oh, I can't bring a sour spirit. And then I preached on Fox's Book of Martyrs, coincidentally, oh, wow. that Sunday. Amen. And Chuck was so guilty. He's like, 
preaching. You're preaching at me. Like that. That video's online. It's up there. You can watch it. You can watch it. You'll hear Chuck's voice at the background. He's like, we all need it. You know, like that. It is important you come. You come. Bring the Spirit. And trust me, a person who comes in with that sour spirit and the spirit that burdens a whole room cannot be helped but be overwhelmed. Yes. Let's go back to Acts chapter 2. Why no revival? Because there's no assembling. A church is supposed to be known as an assembly. Didn't you know that? That's one of the meanings of what the definition of church is. But I think we've all forgotten what that means. Yeah. We've all forgotten what that means. All right, let's look at verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled, notice right here, it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Notice then, number three, is that when the prayer is there, the attendance is there. This attendance, notice, is related with one accord, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So, before I jump to number three, I think I should put this as number three. It's unity. That is essential. Did you notice something when the Holy Spirit was moving in this prayer room? Did you notice something? I didn't, I didn't ask them to pray specifically for that. You notice the brethren were talking about getting rid of the spirit of bitterness, getting rid of the nitpickiness and then the division, and that everyone would be united. You ever notice that? Every, it was like it was sinking. Why? Because that was the Holy Spirit moving. Yeah. And not only that, we realize the importance, how important, only you would know it if you've been through a revival. There is so much importance in unity. Yeah. If there is no unity, trust me, there is no revival. What? You know, we get so proud hearted as Bible believers and then because of that we think that we know doctrine more than anyone and then when we hear some preacher preach we feel like oh, I, I could have said it better mm. Come on. Uh, he, he made an error right there Come on, get that out. Uh, amen brother amen. Amen. and you know what's even worse is that the punk is only 18 years old yeah. Come on. and all he was good at was posting up social networks amen. on Twitter Facebook Instagram and one day be a YouTube preacher and say, oh, yeah, I, uh, look at Dr. Gene Kim. Yeah, I, I think I can do better than him, you know, stuff like that. Sad. Yeah, that's pride. Right. See, everyone wants to be a YouTube preacher. People think that I'm like that. Have you seen me from my beginning? They don't know. They don't see me from my beginning. How I entered that way online. You know where I came from? It came from a unity. From a unity of Bible believers and people who saw the main video on my main channel and those long videos, where do I always put at the ending? A unity of Bible believers. Yeah. The mo one of the most pivotal teaching teachings I ever did, that I ever did, that a lot of people online, yes, you onliners who have a rebellious attitude, sadly, sometimes. And this is not to say all onliners, so please don't feel bad about that. But there's a good number of onliners who are rebellious and like to cause problems in churches. Yeah. But you, a lot of you onliners even told me this. One of the greatest teachings I ever did was history of Bible believers. Amen. Why? Why? Because of that right. team yes, that went against the gates of hell. Yeah. That made that comeback, that unity. And that's what we need. That's what we need. Without unity, there is no power. Right. There is no Holy Spirit moving. Because what we have right here is when this one person has this part of the Holy Spirit and this person has a different part from the Holy Spirit that is in conflict with each other, the Holy Spirit cannot fill in both and complete in unity as a whole. Yeah, that's good. 
When you have 50 people and 50 people have contradicting spirits, they make the Holy Spirit contradict each other and the Holy Spirit cannot move freely. That's good, preacher. Come on. Get that out of here, man. We don't want that in our blowout. We don't want that in here. We hope you will walk away as soon as we first the si we sing the first hymn. Amen. We hope that you walk away as soon as you hear the first sermon preached. We don't, want, we don't want a person to bring that conflicting spirit and bring depression, bring anger, bitterness, and misery to the people in the room. We want that pride, proudful spirit out. We want to be in unity as... Pure, uh, what, did you, what do you recall, church, when you went to a revival? Pure, utter joy, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Pure, utter joy. I mean, you saw, I mean, do you remember in summer camp? The, the, I mean, you saw, you couldn't hear. I mean, it's such off note key. And these, some of these people sang in such minimal volume, you could barely hear them sing, you know? But people were just couldn't help but run. Yeah. Half of you didn't even know what they said. You just ran around anyway. <laughs> Some of us who know the song, we know what they were going to say even though we didn't hear it. So it's like, paid in full. And they, I just jump off the chair and go, woo, paid in full. Like that. I just complete the verse for them, you know? I mean, man, those days, you know, where, I mean, the, the times where men would run around the w room and even some of the girls would take off their shoes and sandals and throw it across the room. And then you'd see your pastor doing a somersault. And then, and then Brother Nate then tackle missionary yeah. Siselchik on the ground, you know, boom, like that on the ground, like that. And then Pastor Walker, you know, the stoic, right, you know, serious person, just walks over suddenly without us watching and picks up Hiram's backpack and go, woo, woo, woo. And then throws it on the room and then he slams against the board behind him because out of dizziness. <laughs> you ever seen that? Where Robert just shouts so much that you hear him at lunchtime talking like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> like that after that. What's, and then you see those charismatic kooks and those, those neo-evangelical... CCM worshipers yep. yeah. with girls who have short shorts and don't know the definition of modesty yeah. Amen. and their counselors and their leaders they just look at us and then the guy who's in charge of the camp just can't help and just stare at us for hours and then come to us and say I never heard old-fashioned hymn singing where people are so passionate like that yeah. amazing right amazing and then you get Pastor Gorski running out of the summer camp and he's going, ah, whoa! And then the, those guys playing CCM are going, what, what, what? And they get out of sync and they couldn't even play their worship music correctly. What's that? That's the Holy Spirit power Amen. without fleshy means yes. Amen. to bring the power. Amen. Not fake. Amen. You know why they charismatics have to feel the presence of the Holy Ghost when they dim the lights set the mood puff up smoke and glitter up in the air so that they can be amazed at the scenes why do they have to have that drum set and electric guitar set the mood they feel like they need those means to feel God isn't that sad fleshy means to feel the Holy Spirit no it's God it's in unity and it naturally comes out You want the Holy Spirit to fall? You don't get the Holy Spirit to fall by playing your electric guitar and demanding Him to fall on you. On, Holy Spirit, fall on us. Holy Spirit, fall on us. It just sounds like, it's scary to me. It's, it looks like a Satan worshiper yeah. trying to call upon some spirit to come inside then. Yeah. Yeah. Conjuring it up. Yeah. That's scary to me. Calling it's calling Baal. Yeah. Amen. And then when, when, they're, when they're speaking in tongues... Yeah, come on. It's like the devils are flying all over the room now. Yeah. Yeah. Unity from the heart. But didn't the book of Acts chapter 2 said they spoke in tongues when the Holy Spirit fell? When they were speaking in tongues, you know what that was? They didn't read. Verse 6, 
Acts chapter 2, verse 6. Every man heard as it was in his what? Amen. Own language. language. Yeah. Yeah. You know what brings God's glory? When he hears people at summer camp saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah, in his or her own language. Yeah. What happened? That's why verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. That's... The revival that we need is the filling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We always pray for it, right? We always want it, right? Amen. But in order for him to come, is not conjuring it up. It is through natural means of this that the Holy Spirit will fill upon your life. And when he fills upon your heart and your soul and your mind, then he can begin working the increase. Look at the last part of Acts chapter 2 and see what the Lord does. Look at verse 41. Yeah. Then they that gladly received. Isn't that correct? Think about the re previous revivals you've been to, right? Wasn't it like this when we started out? So that's why we like all night prayer meetings, see? Yeah. <laughs> then it started out like this, and then it went to here. All right, let's all make an effort and come. Some of you went through deliberate attacks from Satan and a trial and a train wreck, and yet you dragged yourself to come. Amen. And after that, wasn't there like just natural unity all of a sudden? It's like you didn't think about the differences with each other or nitpickiness. It's just... Talk, just talk and enjoy fellowship. And then with that unity, not only that, there was a cooperation of the preacher, the singing, and just participating. There was that cooperation. With that unity, what happened? He suddenly came in without you knowing it. That's how you're filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not something that you force or do. He moves in himself without you realizing it. You ever, you've been to those songs, right, where we were hymn singing and we just don't know when the Holy Spirit might move, right? That's when he comes in. He comes in without you knowing it. It's all natural. And when he falls upon you, that's why verse 41 becomes the result. There's a gladness, a joy. You remember those nights, those days, where because of this and God decided to move in, this was the result? All of us, it's just pure joy. You didn't care. You didn't care what time it was. Three in the morning testimonies. Couldn't yeah. care. It's <laughs> like just coming in. <laughs> couldn't care. Oh, man, so tired from summer camp. Just couldn't care, but just come to church and listen to the preacher. Just couldn't care. It's just purely joy. It's just joy. And the flesh, oh man, the flesh was crying, I'm sure, right? Like, ah, ah, you know? But the spirit just could not help it. Could not help it. Could not help but sing again. To shout again. To fellowship again. To pray again. To rejoice again. To speak his word again. Yeah, amen. All right, let's look back at Acts chapter 2, verse 41. We're bapt they gladly received his word and were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So notice now there is salvation. Have you ever been to a revival meeting that the Holy Ghost was so real and powerful and there was such a gladness with Christians that the person all of a sudden went up to you and say, hey, I don't know how to get saved. Can I receive Jesus Christ? How do I get saved? There's something about you guys that spoke to me and it just became real and I wanted to get <coughs> saved. I remember Brother Jin Cho, that oh, wow. he, he had an earring on his ear, looked like a feminine you know, person. <laughs> and then he came to summer camp <laughs> because Brother Caleb invited him. <coughs> But then the Holy Spirit moved with such power 
Thank you, Lord. That brother Jin, Thank you for that. he got saved at summer camp. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He was so into heavy rap music, you know, the music booming loud, but he got rid of that in his, in his car trunk. Took that earring and got rid of that fag earring, man. Yeah, he didn't check it. Took away the garments of his flesh and got rid of it. Yeah. And when the preacher was preaching at summer camp, he said, Hey, Jin, ain't it feel great to put off the garments of the old man and put on the new man? And Jin just got up and went, Whoa, come on, pray! <laughs> Didn't it feel great? You, I remember that time where this other brother that came to summer camp and I remember that I took him aside during uh, line at lunch and I was like, so are you saved? And he wasn't sure, but he knew there was something real about us and he was so impressed to see it, the preaching and then the spirit. And then he told me that in his other camp meetings and other church services that they would interrogate, try to force the salvation. Did you really repent? I put a Paul Washer sermon on you. See, the power of God is so weak in such carnal, fleshy, neo-evangelical churches that to gain salvation is not through natural means of the Spirit, but through terrorizing and through forcing. Right. Yeah, saying that they have not really repented to receive Christ for salvation. And that's why a lot of independent fundamental Baptist churches are guilty where they have these huge youth rallies and then proclaim revival but it's through preachers interrogating the youth are, trying to force them down the altar, yeah. interrogating their salvation as if they didn't really repent. Right. And then they use all these gimmicks and these fun and games where they can build up the numbers yep. and then use the forcefulness to bring in revival. That's not revival. Amen. It's natural. Amen. He just moves. Yeah. You don't conjure it up. Right. He just moves. Mm -hmm. Look at the next part, verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship Amen. and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common mm -hmm. and sold their possessions and goods and parred them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such Amen. as should be saved. Amen. Then you know what happens after that revival? Then they decide to hold steadfast to the right doctrine. And that's why they say after summer camp or after a revival meeting, I'm going to come to San Jose Bible Baptist Church again. And then you see them every Sunday henceforth. You saw that before? And then they say, that's why I'm a King James Bible believing dispensationalist. Then they start to also fellowship. Quite often. You ever notice them after a big revival meeting, then they start to fellowship even more yeah. people? Then you notice after that that they started to pray even more with other people? Yeah. Then you notice after that that they also start to believe, all that believed, they had what? All things in common. So the unity increased even more. You notice that they also gave up the worldly possessions. Yeah. They sold all their worldly goods. You ever notice that after a revival meeting? Isn't this true when you go by this? These just naturally happen. You notice that? Naturally? Naturally happen? Your life was never the same, was it? No. Your life was never the same. Why no revival? Someone didn't start it right. Someone didn't start it right. That's why. They praised God. And not only that, they had favor with all the people. See, the world started to see them now. It became a good testimony. Where 
a fleshy contemporary camp counselor would walk to the church and say, wow, I never heard old-fashioned hymns singing like that before. How about that? See, the world gets impressed by your testimony. You know what a lot of churches are doing? They try to impress the world first. Yeah. And that's why the power of God can't move. Yeah. No, you let the Holy Spirit move. And trust me, the world cannot deny something real in you. Right. Amen. And then what? It's, it's even the Lord. God gives the increase. Amen. So you know what people do? They give the increase. This is last. This is the last result. He knows this is not the most important, but you churches think so. That's why you missed out so much of the power of God. This is the results that happen, and you can't deny it if you did experience that revival. Amen. You know that's true. Amen. Is that when you do this, He just naturally comes in and this all happens. This all happens at once. It's amazing what God can do to give the increase and change your life forever. And boy, did he ruin you. <laughs> In a real good way that you can, ne I, it'll never change. It'll never change. And then now your friends and family members look at you and say, what happened to you? You used to be good at this. You used to do this. And you used to cuss a lot more than me. What happened to you? Jesus changed my life. Why no revival? You now know. Let's all go home now. Let's look forward to the blowout. Yeah. God, my Father, I pray that um, Laodicean Christians have learned a valuable lesson and that we will bring revival. Nay, I correct myself, Lord, that you would bring revival to us, but that we would yield ourselves to your revival and that we would surrender ourselves and do what we are, uh, that we ought to do. Father God, we cannot demand, we cannot bring, only you can bring it, Lord, and only you can give it to us. But we, we, but we beseech thee, as the book of Luke and Matthew talked about, knocking on your door in the middle of the night, asking for the Holy Spirit, and your word says, how much more, how much more shall he give the Holy Spirit to them that ask them? We do so, Heavenly Father, and will you move upon us tonight? I trust that all of us would... Apply what we've heard tonight and that you can start moving in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Out of all the wrong doctrines that's happening in our day and age at the last days of the church as the apocalypse is coming even closer, the point of all this, friend, is that you won't be even able to grow in knowledge of the truth, in Bible-believing truth, until you get saved first. The most important question you have to ask yourself after watching all this is if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to go to heaven? Perhaps one of these wrong doctrines have affected you and you had the improper way of salvation. As you have seen before, the way to get saved is very simple. It's only simply salvation by grace alone without works through the Lord Jesus Christ in this Christian day and age. If you're not sure that you can go to heaven after you die, it's very simple to get saved. First of all, you have to understand that because of sin, God is a holy God, and He cannot even allow 1% of sin into heaven. So He has to judge sin with a burning hell. So it is very important that you got to realize how serious sin is, and you must repent. You might say, well then, I guess I have to clean up all my sins. I guess I have to go to church. I guess I have to get baptized. I have to, I have to be a good person. No, my friend, good works can never save you. Jesus is God who died, buried, and resurrected so that He can pay all the sins for you. You don't have to pay a single sin for yourself. So all you have to do as a repentant sinner is turn to what He did on the cross alone for your salvation. You might say, well, Pastor, I do believe only on what Jesus did on the cross to save me. That's great. Then all you have to do is just say that to the Lord. You might say, well, preacher, I haven't prayed much before in my life. I don't know really how to say it to God. Can you help me out? Sure. You could say it this way. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. As I repent, I put my faith 
that Jesus is God and that He died, buried and resurrected so that His blood can wash away my sins. I put my faith in that alone to save me, not my good works. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Congratulations, my friend, if you meant it with all your heart that you put your faith only on what Jesus did on the cross through His blood to save you, then you are saved. It's that simple, my friend. Now, my friend, it is important to grow in Bible-believing truth. You now know the truth. What are you going to do about it? As the apocalypse comes even more closer and Satan's about his, to set up his kingdom even more, there are many souls dying and going to hell, and even many more churches out there who don't know right and wrong doctrine. It is up to you now on what to do. And go to our resources site, www.bbcenglish.org, and click on the resources link over there, and it'll give you everything that you need to grow in grace. The next step of your journey now is up to you. We've done our part giving you this movie. All of it was done for free by the love of the people. God bless you. Or should we just stick to the Sermon on the Mount? A passage that is so radical that it's doubtful that our own Defense Department would survive its application. King James onlyism is double standards. Now there's a false doctrine out there called dispensationalism. Yeah, I, I don't believe one saved always saved. The God of the Old Testament is arguably the most unpleasant character in all fiction. Jealous and proud of it, a petty, unjust, unforgiving control freak, a vindictive, bloodthirsty ethnic cleanser, a misogynistic, homophobic, racist, infanticidal, genocidal, filicidal, pestilential, megalomaniacal, sadomasochistic, capriciously malevolent bully. <laughs> But you don't want to get identified with the reproach of what really believing this Bible is all about. You know what these wicked left-wing liberal perverts want you to do? Legalizing the marijuana or homosexuality or if the whole entire world turns against the Lord. Is that person saved? Is that person on their way to heaven or hell? The common person has no thought of God in their mind. That people will leave the church over the color of the carpet. What's wrong with our churches? Why don't we have a closer walk with Jesus? Why isn't everybody running around like little Jesus is shouting, screaming, and hollering? That thing you look in the mirror, it don't want to go street preaching. It don't want to read the Bible. It don't want to pray. It wants to watch TV and a bunch of other junk. A lot of you don't have it because you're lazy. That's why you don't have it. Because you won't work. That's why. Don't you know the Bible says, Whoa! Unto the wicked! And I'll tell you, Jesus Christ loved you enough. He came down here, put up with your dirty ways. The wages of sin is death. When you offer somebody a gospel track, if uh, you're walking away and you see them throw it on the ground, that's not because they're afraid of what's in it. They know what's in it. No matter where you are today, turn to God and place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And God Almighty got me through and got me through for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years, 30 years, 35 years, 40 years. You mess with that book, honey, I'll mess with you. Shame on you, you don't think about it. Shame on you, you don't think about it. Shame on you, if you don't think this with Jesus Christ. Shame on you. I like to whip that snot out of you.
see soul saving. Then we'll see God do something with this truth. Then we'll see the liberals and the homosexuals getting up there. Then we'll see those apostate Christians getting mad. Then we'll see all the world opening their eyes to the truth and they say, yeah, we have not seen such a thing. Brother, sister, there's only one hope. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the man God, our Savior, Jesus Christ.